中期が強くなってきているその装備では持たん避難完了と判断してこれより撤収する戻り次第封鎖してくれ了解隊長あれはうん？なんだ At a Riverside hospital, the one that involved toxic fumes and the evacuation of an emergency room. Our doctor, uh, medical editor, Dr. Bruce Hensel, is here right now. He's been following the story from the very beginning and now has the results of his own investigation. Dr. That's Bruce. right, Diane. It's been a long road from the very beginning with many turns. Statements, findings, anger, controversy, and unanswered questions. Ever since the world first learned of the evacuation, at Riverside General Hospital. Now what emergency? We have an internal disaster down here. Emergency room. Doctors are down. Nurses are down. Respiratory therapists are fainting. It started out as a routine ambulance run and then erupted into disaster. Cervical cancer patient Gloria Ramirez was being treated for a fast heartbeat. The doctors and nurses around her suddenly fell ill. Dr. Julie Gorchinsky smelled ammonia, walked a few feet away, and lost consciousness. Last thing I remember was waking up on the floor and someone was uh, assisting my breathing since I couldn't, uh, was, was unable to breathe by myself. Gorchinsky and 21 others were evacuated to the parking lot where Mirez died. The county believes she may have been the source of the problem. Whatever happened, it was when that patient was in that room. When results from a bizarre space age autopsy said Ramirez died of natural causes, officials began to look elsewhere. Come on! 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 Come on!
From that point on, some people believe the investigation was studded with inconsistencies and oversights. Number one, Cal OSHA said they found no evidence of fumes in the emergency room. But Channel 4 has now learned their investigation was hampered by emergency cleanup crews who got there before they did. Number two, the syringe, which reportedly gave off fumes itself and contained crystals from Gloria's blood, has never been found. Number three, initial blood tests recorded in Ramirez's and Gorchinsky's medical charts show decreased enzymes that suggest pesticide poisoning. <laughs> Both Gorchinsky and one of her nurses, Sally Balladeras, were treated with pesticide antidotes. And records show that the ER was sprayed with pesticides just four days before Ramirez was brought in. And most recently, Riverside's coroner contradicted his previous autopsy finding, saying new results showed Ramirez came in contact with a substance called DMSO. In the emergency room, a chemical uh, process occurred that transformed this compound into a deadly toxic substance. Although that's theoretically possible, no case of that reaction causing these symptoms has ever been reported. <laughs> And it certainly does not explain what Channel 4 recently learned about what happened after the initial disaster. Dr. Gorchinsky and one of her nurses were transferred from Riverside General here to Parkview Community Hospital. What very few people know is that four of the workers who treated them here became ill themselves. Dr. Bruce Gillis, an internist and poison expert, examined all four new patients. He says their similar symptoms experienced at different hospitals argues against a DMSO reaction at Riverside and for an entirely different poison. There is a single agent that has been transmitted from Riverside General to Parkview by each individual person. But what was that agent and where did it come from? No one seems to know. Oh, 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 oh,
軍の雲の中じゃ放電まで始まってるんだティックタックの装着も待っておいよし死に水は俺が取ってやる For now, the investigation is closed. That doesn't surprise Ramirez's sister, who feels the accusing finger has once more turned unjustly toward Gloria. She was not the source of fumes. She was a victim made out to look like she was the source of fumes. Ramirez and Gorchinsky, who suffered from pancreatitis, hepatitis, and had three knee operations, are suing. State Health Department suggestion this was mass hysteria is questioned in all quarters. The saddest thing, we may never know the answer. One medical mystery it may never be solved. Okay. We'll have more on this to come. Thanks, Doc. All right, guys. Sorry about this, but it's kind of ghettoish. But this is what happens when you don't know how to edit your own stuff very well. All right. Uh, medical mystery that may never be solved. Well, I'm Kevin Pretty. Everything can be solved and figured out. Let me go ahead and explain to you quickly what happened. This uh, case took place in 1994 um, in Riverside, California, and this is the deal. In 1994, there was a popular drug called Biker Crank or Crank that was popular among the biker gangs. Okay. Um, that drug had, has been around for a long time. What had happened was, I don't want to say, uh, well, it was Filipinos that discovered uh, if they added a chemical called P2P, it made uh, the, the crank into a drug called glass. Now, I don't want to say that, that they got jobs in the hospital specifically for this, but, you know, a lot of Filipinos work in the hospital, uh, you know, industry as uh you know uh what do you call it nurses and 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 um i forget the exact name they call them uh crns or something like that whatever now i this is just what what i've learned that a lot of those filipinos were involved in a drug tra traffic thing going on at, th at this time this is 17 years ago keep in mind actually over 17 years ago so it's been a while and I've just been able to get it out to you now. It's just the way it is, guys. That's my life. Yeah, I'm always late. <laughs> Not always, but anyway. So what happened was uh, this drug was, was, was changed by this chemical that they knew, that, that Filipinos knew how to add to it, um, which, which changed it into uh, what is, they call glass. Now, this drug in Hawaii was known as, as uh, ice, and in New York City it was called Tina. So it made it stronger and it was like an aphrodisiac. So in order to, to actually make the drug, they needed to, uh, to get access uh, to the chemical or chemicals that were used in it. And those chemicals were in the hospitals. So what they did was they stored, or I'm not sure if they made it out of or needed whatever they needed, the IV bags, you know, the IV bags that that you use and drips the fluid into the body well that's what they use to store the drugs in okay in those IV bags and then they would smuggle them out without detection at that time because at that time I don't think that they kept inventory on those IV bags I'm sure they do now and simply what happened was the night Gloria came in her name was you know known as the mysterious fumes woman or Gloria uh, Ramirez was her name. The night she came in, an emergency, one of, well, somebody unsuspectedly went in and got one of those IV bags that was filled with the drug. And it's so potent and so strong. They didn't realize it, they didn't know, and they hooked her up and it killed her and the fumes went everywhere and people who were closely in contact with it you know, got, got taken in by it. So that's what happened. And that's why people were passing out and this and that. So I think that the hospital, that the secret team or whoever came in there and cleaned up everything, they knew all about, they knew what it was and they wanted to sweep this under the table so they didn't have major lawsuits, etc. So that's simply, that's what happened. And I just want to get this out there because first of all, you know, to the family, I don't know if this has ever been resolved. I, don't, I haven't really looked into it deeply to see if they ever figured out or found out what this stuff was. Well, now you know. So now you can take this 
whoever and 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 maybe I don't know maybe the case is closed or, or statute of limitations I don't know but just as a thing to the family and kids that are now adults and they never knew what happened to their mother or to their aunt or you know daughter etc that's what happened and I did try contacting the lawyer at uh, of that time recently within the last six months I wasn't a I, I found the person same name lawyer I called the office talked to secretary numerous times left messages for him to call me back I, I never received that call I ended it right there and now I'm posting this on YouTube for anybody out there who may know we go. more additional I'm about to see uh, information or whatever you may want to do with the story. Anyway, uh, Kevin Fertitte, signing out.